So I think what people may not know about you who just see you on TV every day, they certainly know from the arguments you make in your law background. Um, what I did not know, and again, this is why I love these interviews, mm -hmm. I didn't realize you were such a child prodigy. I did not realize oh. this. So for those listening, Sunny started high school at 12, okay? <laughs> I don't even want to tell y'all what I was doing at 12, but it damn sure wasn't starting high school because I was a little smart. I wasn't that damn smart. Um, and I love the story you tell in your book about how in third grade, you took that proficiency exam and you tested to be a 12th grader in third grade. That's I fucking did. absurd <laughs> because um, you started high school at 12. I uh, imagine that was a very different social transition for you. So what was it like to be in high school at a time where you, you know, your peers are driving, they're doing all this other stuff that I imagine a 12 year old couldn't quite do? It was awful. <laughs> I don't <laughs> encourage it. I don't encourage it. You know, um, in, in many ways, my, my son uh, was a child prodigy and I did not allow him to advance. Um, and in fact, he, he graduated uh, high school at 17 and I uh, and I, I started college at 16, which was also not a good thing. And uh, I, I he he decided to take a gap year um, and, and thankfully started um, college at 18, which uh, I'm sorry, started college at 19, which I think is uh, 18 and then turning 19 actually, which was much better for him. Um, it's, it's, you know, no 12 year old, I think should really be in high school, right? I mean, I couldn't date, I couldn't go out. Um, and I started doing things anyway. So like academically, I could keep up, but um, socially, I just wasn't where everyone else was. And I think that's why in many respects, I'm kind of childlike now. I get a lot of things from viewers that are like, for a 53 year old, you're so naive. Well, I was kind of stunted early on um, because of that experience, even in college. You know, you start college at 16, you still can't really drive. <laughs> so there are all these things, you know, you can't do. Um, and I, I just wouldn't advise it um, for, for anyone. I mean, it worked out for me, but I, I, I had a difficult time with it socially. I really did. And a lot of people, uh, when I hear people saying, oh, my best friend from high school, or, you know, I don't have that because I was just, um, I, I didn't have contemporaries, really. My best friends are actually from college and, and law school. And I'm older than a lot of my friends because my friends, um, you know, were younger, actually. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not a, it, an easy um, life choice. You know, I don't know that they're, they're skipping kids as much um, as, as they used to. But I guess there aren't that many child prodigies, right? Yeah, there's not are, that many third graders that are testing I, at a 12th know, grade level. I know, <laughs> I know there aren't. But um, yeah, that was that's interesting. No one really has ever asked me that question. Um, but no, it's socially, it's a, it's you're a hot mess. You just you just are. You can't experience the things that your contemporaries are, and it's, it feels unfair. So another thing that I loved about your memoir is that you. Um, you take this theme of how you've had to survive in a bunch of different worlds, right? Yeah. And so one of them is the one we just talked about <laughs> when you talked about surviving um, socially when you were so academically advanced. Then you had the world of growing up in the South Bronx, growing mm -hmm. up with a um, African-American father and a Puerto Rican mother. And what I, I thought was um, really wonderful and also fascinating is that it didn't seem like um, that on your uh, Puerto Rican side, that they put a lot of pressure on you to assimilate. And we have seen with other, you know, mm -hmm. um, Latino cultures that there is a huge pressure to assimilate. Um, yeah. Why did your family seem to see that so differently? It's my mom. I mean, I, it's like, I just have to tip my hat to her. She was someone who, and is someone who was just so attuned to the, injustice um, that the African American community endured and continues to endure. And I'm not sure where the insight came from, if I'm being honest, because 
my mom is is a white looking Puerto Rican um, and her father is actually Sephardic. So he's like a Jewish guy from Spain who lived in Puerto Rico, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at her and you've, you've seen her, Jamel, I mean, she looks just like a white lady and um, who married a black guy in the sixties, right? And so they had the experience of like trying to live in Georgia and the KKK burned across outside of their home. Um, you know, and then they have a kid, you know, a year after the loving case and that's me and no one looks like me at the time. And my father's family was like, y'all don't know what you're getting into. This is really bad. And my mother's family was also like, y'all don't know what you're getting into. This is really gonna be hard. And, and it's true, we couldn't get apartments and we couldn't get housing and no one, you know, would it be accepting of our of our little tiny family. Um, but my mother, and I, there were times in my mother's family that they were like, you know, uh, you're lucky, you know, she got good hair. I mean, just these ignorant things that people would <laughs> say, like, you know, she could have been darker, you're lucky. Um, and my mother would just immediately shut it down. You know, what does that mean? And I mean, just like shut it down. And um, she would just always tell me, you know, you're beautiful, you're unique, um, you know, she would always tell me, you know, that white standard of beauty, that ain't beauty. I mean, it was like, I don't know. She was like, she had this sense of what I needed before it was a popular thing. Um, she knew that I needed to know that um, being black was strong and beautiful um, and the culture was so full and rich. She just, she just knew it and, and, and that I shouldn't assimilate and, and that I couldn't, you know, she just, she just knew it. And so it's, it's really my mom. Um, and even in, on the census, she still to this day identifies as black by race because she says all people are black. <laughs> it's like she's she's just uh, you know she's just a very interesting person. So it, it's it's my mom, and and I will say it pains me to this day that um, there are so many uh, there's so much colorism and racism in the Latino community. It pains me that that I mean it, it's an issue that Latinos don't talk about, and it's it's so unfortunate. Um, but I I have to credit my mother. I mean she's she's the original. So by that, um, uh, along those same lines, and for people listening who may be fans of yours and, and may not know this, is um, Sunny is not your real name. I mean, it's a no. nickname. <laughs> um, your, um, your, your real name is Asuncion. Hopefully I said mm -hmm. that right. All right. Yeah, you <laughs> or, did. You did. did I get close enough? Okay. Yeah. Um, so how did your uh, family feel about you mostly for TV purposes, not necessarily in the courtroom. How did they feel when you decided to change your your name? Yeah, no, in the courtroom I was Asuncion. Um, they were not happy. Uh, my mother's still not that happy with it, you know, because I'm named after my grandmother's sister, um, so it's a family name, and um, I think they felt that I was assimilating, and that is something that my family does not do. Um, we have one family member that does it and, you know, everyone is like, <laughs> we all talk about it, <laughs> um, you know, gave the kids like very, um, Eurocentric names and that sort of thing. I mean, if you think about it, my mother's name is Rosa Adelaida, her sister, sister's name is Carmen Lidia, then we have Ines. Um, and, and my name is Asuncion Providencia. So there's, you know, Jose Vidal we have, we have Magali, Tamara. No one has um, an American name really, or an, a Eurocentric name, I should say. So I do go by Sunny um, because America, the United States is really one of the only countries in the world that is very proud of only speaking one language, right? <laughs> We're like monolingual. Yeah, even and... though English is not even our official language. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. um, um, but because um, I did wanna be able to 
affect change. Um, I took the advice uh, of Nancy Grace, who herself could not pronounce my name. Um, when I first started out in television, you know, she just sort of, you know, at during a break on Court TV, she was like, can I say something to you? And I was like, yes. And, and she just said, you know, your name, no one can pronounce it. They can't say it. They can't remember it. And, and I believed her. And I think she was probably right, given this country. And, and she said, you know, does anyone call you anything? And in college, a couple of people started calling me Sunny. And I said, oh, a couple of people who can't pronounce my name call me Sunny. She's like, oh, that's perfect. And she, just right in that moment, she changed the Chiron, she changed it to Sunny. And it was incredible. People just did start calling me, started remembering my name. People that have been avoiding me kind of before were like, oh, Sunny, how are you? And before I realized, I realized then that's why people were like, oh, hey, nice to see you again. But they would never say my name. And it's because they couldn't remember it or pronounce it. Um, and that's, you know, it says something I think about our country, about the fact that we are monolingual. Um, you know, Spanish is my first language. Actually, I didn't, I didn't learn English until I was five um, or six, actually. My father always reminds me that he couldn't communicate with me um, until, until I learned English. Um, I, I, you know, my family isn't happy about it. I remember my grandmother, you know, we all always lived together and, and people would call and say, hey, can I speak with Sonny? And she would say, no, I Sonny, I pee, no, I Sonny. Um, and, you know, do I regret the name change? There are times that I regret it. Like when Latina Magazine didn't put me on the cover because they didn't believe I was Latina. Yeah, I, I was like, really? You know, but they put other people on the cover that don't speak Spanish, that aren't really, you know, of, 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 of Latin roots. But um, I don't know if I'd be sitting here with you today, unfortunately, had I not changed it. 